What's up everyone, it's Justin. And today, I'm just as surprised as the rest of y'all. I'm gonna be talking about what, the 10th attempt at a live action adaptation of this franchise? I'm gonna be giving you my spoiler free thoughts and opinions on season one of Netflix's Resident Evil. I have to be honest with you, when I saw the first picture reveal for this show, wasn't really feeling it. When I read the synopsis for the show, I wasn't feeling it. And even when the first trailer dropped, I just, nothing grabbed me, you know? So even if it did look a little bit like crap to me, I'm still gonna watch. I'm a huge fan of the franchise. So here's the general setup. Albert Wesker, played by Lance Reddick from the John Wick series, is moving into his new home in New Raccoon City, like New York, New Jersey, New Raccoon City. He works for a seedy corporation called Umbrella, and for those who aren't familiar, it's like any huge American corporation where y'all just question what goes on behind the scenes, you know? His two daughters, played by Sienna Agadong and Tamara Smart, are in high school dealing with all the typical tropes, bullies, boys, you know, that fun stuff. And then one day they find out what their father's really getting into at his company. And the mystery unfolds from there. But that's not all. This show is like the series Arrow on CW in the sense that it kind of flip-flops between two plot lines, one taking place in 2022 and the other in 2036. And in the future plot line, we see Jade Wesker dealing with this post-apocalyptic zombie infested world just trying to survive. So currently as I film this review, this is sitting at a 3.6 on IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes isn't that much fairer to it. And the whole purpose of me doing this review, in my opinion, is those people are either review bombers, trolls, or just bitter people who only watched the first or second episode. Because in my opinion, this is definitely a new, fresh take for the Resident Evil franchise that it needed. We have good acting all around, probably the best CGI I've seen in a live action RE adaptation, some badass looking practical effects used for the zombies, intrigue, lore, and overabundance of references that fans of the video game series will love if you follow through with the whole series. From certain guns, characters used, and events even referenced. They surprisingly weave a lot of stuff into this new story and it's just a well-written show and I wasn't expecting it. Hell, certain scenes in this show remind me of some of the more action-centered levels from the Resident Evil games. The music was good when it was there. I mean, we get some chilling, tense music. There's a Dead Mouse song in it that slaps. And surprisingly enough, there's a song by Billie Eilish that's used a few times in this. I'm not a huge fan of her, but it actually fit perfectly with this show. As far as negatives are concerned, if you're expecting a straight-up adaptation of the game's storyline and all, you're probably going to be disappointed. I get that the first saga films that came out weren't the story we wanted, and even though I enjoyed Welcome to Raccoon City, not a perfect film in any stretch, but the general audience still wanted something better. I mean, I would love to see a live-action adaptation of other games, Resident Evil 4, Zero, Code Veronica. How hard could it be? So I definitely feel something was missing after finishing season one, you know? And although I love the action, intrigue, mystery, like all that stuff in the show, I definitely feel like the level of horror could have been beefed up a bit. They do attempt it and it does work for the scenes they use it in, but it's just, you know, another aspect that could have just been elevated a little bit more. The 2036 plot line, I mean, it's action packed and interesting at times. I do like Jade Wesker and her story, but everyone else, all the sub characters or supporting characters, if you will, I just couldn't give two shits about. And my final, like, slight negative, Albert Wesker. So there's been perfect race swap characters in cinema and TV shows before. Perfect example, Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon in The Batman. Perfect casting. But here we have Lance Reddick playing Albert Wesker. There's so much I can't really tell you about his character because he's full of surprises, but there's one aspect of him that just can't be accomplished with the swapped race. Wesker in the video games was all about wanting to be a part of a superior race. He went through experiments, wanted the extinction of the human population with him ruling a new one. He's got blonde hair, blue eyes. He's driven by this Nazi-esque backstory. And with this new show, that's just something that was missing from Lance Reddick's interpretation. Don't get me wrong, he did do a good job for what he's given. He's complex and there's a lot of hooks to the character. It's just something's missing again, just like I said with some other aspects. So at the end of the day, Resident Evil fans, casual fans, I definitely recommend checking out this show. Watch it till the end before you get your critiques in. There's no mid or after credit scene, but a lot of the stuff they did at the end and throughout the show kept me intrigued. Stick with this show and find out what they're trying to do with it. Hell, I mean, I want a season two, I hope we get that. Overall, it's not a perfect show, or hell, I wouldn't even consider this great, but it's a pretty good new standalone story that weaves elements of the games into it. Let me know what you guys thought of season one down in the comments below, and if you're still hesitant, I wanna know why. So, as always, thank you for stopping by. Until next time.